Hey paper florist friends, I hope you're doing well. So you might know that May 14th is International Paper Flower Day. And what better way to celebrate than to publish a tutorial? So a group of us from the Facebook team, myself, Susan, and Jerry, we're collaborating on a tutorial together and it's going to be the clematis. So this is my take on it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the center right here. There's a lot of fun detail that you can put into this flower and I think you're gonna really like it. So enjoy part one, here we go. So here's the clematis center that I'm going to be showing you in today's video. Let's quickly go over the materials that you'll need to make this. To make the center fringe, I'm using 180 gram Italian crepe. This color is called French vanilla. So to make the inner fringe, you'll need a three quarter inch high by three and a half inch long unstretched piece of crepe. And to make the outer fringe, you'll need two pieces. One is uh, one and a quarter inch high by two inches wide unstretched crepe. And the other is three quarter inch high by two inches long unstretched crepe. You'll also need a 20 gauge wire and some little strips of green crepe to wrap around the base of the center. Other stuff you'll need for the center, you'll need Mod Podge. Um, it can be matte or gloss finish, doesn't matter. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use tacky glue. That would also be fine. I'll need a brush for the Mod Podge. If you'd like to color the tips of your fringe like I have on this center, you'll need something to color the paper with. I'm using watercolor paint, and I've got a, a paint brush here for that. Uh, you could also use marker or pan pastel. It's really up to you. I've got a clip to hold my paper as I fringe. This will be very handy. And I've got tacky glue and scissors, and that's all we need. So the first thing I'm going to do here is prep my paper for the center fringe. So this piece here is for the very center, and the first thing I'm going to do is stretch it out all the way as far as it goes. And if you'd like to add some color to this fringe, what you'll want to do is measure off the last third of the paper. So I'm just going to approximate that and make a little fold here just so that I have an indicator for that length. And now I'm going to add paint just to this last third of the paper. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using watercolor paint and I'm using a combination of some crimson paint and mixing in a little bit of black paint. So I'm just going to apply paint to this last third of the strip and I'm just going to feather on a little bit of color I'm not going to worry about this very bottom edge because that's going to be wrapped around the stem and won't be visible. That's maybe a little bit more black than I prefer, so I'm just going to add a little bit more crimson color to this. There we go. I like that. And now I'll flip it over and do the other side. All right, so we've got quite a nice color there. I'm gonna set this aside to dry. The next thing I'm going to prep is the outer fringe, and that has two pieces of paper. First, I'm going to stretch out this larger piece. Stretch it all the way out as far as you can. And I'll stretch out the shorter piece. Do the same thing, stretch it all the way out. And now I'm gonna laminate these two pieces together. I'm gonna to use the Mod Podge to do that. So I'm gonna take a generous amount on my brush and I'm going to apply it all over the surface of the shorter piece. I'm applying it a little bit thicker than we would normally do for a coating. We want a really generous amount Get that paper nice and covered with Mod Podge. And now I'm going to stick this on. 
all along the bottom edge of the larger piece. And it's okay if you've got some edges sticking out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it running along the bottom here, matching up there. So now I'm gonna give this a nice press, make sure it's really stuck to that piece below. Let that settle in for just a moment. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of paint to this as well. All right, now I'm gonna use the same combo of crimson and black paint. So I'm just gonna get a small amount of paint on my brush and lightly paint the very top edge right above that second strip here. And if you do get some on the second strip a little bit, don't worry about it. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm just doing a light little coating here at first getting a little bit of color. And now I'm going to get a little more paint on my brush so it's a little bit darker and make a dark section right along the top edge. And now I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so there we go. It's painted on both sides. I'm gonna give this a while to dry, at least half an hour or so before moving on to the next step. All right, so our strips are nice and dry and we can start doing some fringing. So I'm gonna start with this long piece for the very center fringe. And you can see that it's right in here. It's a little shorter than these outer pieces. So I'm going to take this strip, I'm going to fold it up a little bit to make it easier and faster to fringe. So I'm going to fold it in half and I'm lining up the edges really nicely. I'm going to fold it in half again. Make sure everything's lined up and make sure that your painted section is facing downwards. We want that to be sticking out of the clip. I'm going to take this clip and clip the top edge. That way my paper will all be held into place. It's going to make it a lot easier to fringe. And I'm putting about a quarter inch of paper inside of the clip. Once that you have it clipped, then go ahead and cut through those folded edges vertically up to the edge of the clip. And now I'm going to go ahead and start fringing. And I want this fringe to be very, very fine. I'm going to be cutting it as small as I can. And this is about one millimeter and less than a sixteenth inch. So make it very, very, very fine fringe. So here's a little bit of a closer view. You can see how fine this fringe is. And I'm gonna go all the way down just like that. All right, everything's all fringed up. And now I'm going to unfold it. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of a curl onto this painted edge. I'm just gonna take my paintbrush handle and gently curl it towards me. just a little bit and I'm going to stop when I get to you the end of the painted section. Now I'm going to take my tacky glue I'm going to put a little stripe of glue all along the bottom. I'm going to take the end of my wire and make a little hook just like this and now I'm going to go ahead and hook this wire through the end of the fringe. Just put it in between a couple of the fringe like that near the end and make sure that you're attaching the unpainted end of the fringe first. You want this painted uh, section to show on the very outside of your fringe roll. 
So I'm just going to close this end up around that wire, sort of pinch the wire closed a little bit, and now I'm going to start winding my paper around. And I want to pull just a little bit, just to make sure it gets on there snugly. And I'm going to be winding the entire roll at the very same height. So make sure that this bottom edge uh, matches up as you are winding the paper strip around. And here we are to the painted edge. And now I'm just going to give this a nice squeeze, make sure that glue is really set in there and everything's attached nice and securely. Now I'm going to just take my finger and kind of press down a little bit, tap down on the top, kind of give this a little bit of a rounded shape. Just like that. So that is the very center of our clematis. So I'll set this aside to dry and I'll start working on the outer fringe. So here's the strip for our outer fringe. And you'll notice now that the Mod Podge is dry, um, there's a little bit of stiffness to the paper. So it really holds its, its self up. It holds its shape really well, much better than just a single layer of paper. So now I want to fringe this. So I'm gonna fold this in half just once. It's thicker and it's also not as long. And I'm going to put the unpainted edge into my clip. I'm going to clip a little bit more this time Maybe closer to half an inch of paper in there. Make sure it's in there nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead and cut through this edge just up till the clip. Now this fringe is going to be a little bit wider. It's going to be about a sixteenth of an inch or about two millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and start fringing that. So I'm gonna cut all the way up to the edge of the clip. And I'm going to fringe the entire strip just like this. All right, we are all fringed here and now I'm going to unfold this. And we're going to do a little bit of edge detail here. Now, if you want to get very precise here, and if you love detail work, you might enjoy going in and tapering each little edge of the fringe. Now, of course, this option is going to take much more time to go through and cut each of these little fringes. So that's really up to you. I'm going to show you a different way to taper the end. Uh, we're going to be rolling the, the end of the fringe, but we're not gonna do each little fringe on its own. I'm gonna take a little section of maybe four or five little fringe pieces and roll that in between my thumb and my finger, just like that. And notice how I'm not rolling the bottom area here. I'm just rolling the very top. That's what you wanna do. We actually want this bottom area to stay a little bit wider and flat. We want that to get that tapered look. So it looks narrow at the top and a little wider here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way down my line of fringe. I'm gonna grab a little section, twist them together, just like that and then separate them back out. So go ahead all the way down your fringe and do that. I've noticed that you get a much uh, nicer roll and each of the fringes does get a little bit of roll if you do sections like this. If you try to do the entire fringe at once and roll it, um, you get a lot of 
uh, ends that don't get any roll at all. And then you have to go in and find them and roll them anyway. So it ends up taking as much time. I just find this, this way to be a little bit easier. So, um, so yeah, go ahead and do that to the entire fringe. All right, now everything is rolled at the end and I've gone through and kind of made sure that I don't have any fringe sticking together. They're all kind of um, separated now. You don't want to have bunches rolled together. So that's looking good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple lines of glue. I'm gonna put one right along the bottom and then I'll put one a little bit above. Oh, but before you put your glue on, and I should have done this already, um, I'm going to go ahead and curl some of these with the handle of my paintbrush just a little bit. Just along the first third or so of the strip. Just like that. It's harder to curl those after they're attached, so easier to do it before you actually glue the strip on. Now I'm going to go ahead and start gluing this on. I'm going to match up the bottom of this strip with the bottom of the uh, fringe that's already on here. I'm going to go ahead and roll around. I'm going to keep it all at the same level, just like the last one. As I roll, I'm pulling the paper just a little bit with this hand right here. I want to make sure it's a nice and snug roll. I don't want it loose or moving around. And there we go. Now I'm just going to go ahead and really give this a nice strong pinch with your fingers. Make sure everything's stuck on there really well. All right, so this is attached. Before I do anything with these little fringes, I'm going to let them dry a little bit. I'm also going to wrap the very bottom onto the stem with a little bit of green paper. So I'm just going to apply a line of tacky glue. So I'm gonna roll a little bit around the stem. I'm going to kind of build up the thickness of the stem right underneath the center here. I'm going to go up onto the bottom of the center just a little bit. Just wrap around a little bit on there. And then finish that off. Now I'm going to attach one more strip right underneath. You'll get a smoother attachment with your petals if you have a little bit extra thickness on that stem right underneath the center. It doesn't need to be perfect. You're going to be putting petals on there so it will not be showing. There you go. I'm gonna let this dry for just a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and finalize the shape of the center. Okay, this has had a few minutes to dry and now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little shaping here. So I'm gonna take all of these outer fringes and push them downwards a little bit. And I really want them to bend right here at the attachment point. So go ahead and just fold those down I'm leaving the ones right at the center that I, I curled in earlier. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and just open up the center just a little bit more so you can see that uh, smaller fringe right in the middle. All right, so I've got the center opened up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just curl a few of these little ends just a little bit. Just a touch. There, that looks good. You can always fine tune this again after your petals are hot. 
So here's your completed center. Thanks so much for joining me today. I do love sharing tutorials with you. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have fun making a clematis. And once again, happy International Paper Flower Day. And with that, I will hand this over to Susan. She's going to show you how to make the petals and then Jerry's gonna teach you how to make the leaves and the stem and assemble the vine. So I will see you all again soon.